Hello, Mount Riders and Blade Runners. Welcome to, well, another Dark Souls video. I thought it was time to celebrate a bit the upcoming release of Elden Ring in February. And this is why I did a general critique of Dark Souls, of the Dark Souls series. In my last video and now I'm gonna do um, a mixture between a beginner's guide and <laughs> a more specific critique of Dark Souls 3. So let's go. Before we start let's have a quick look at our settings and well for a beginner to make it a bit easier I recommend playing offline. This might help with a bit of hardware problems if you have weak old hardware and it will make your playthrough less stuffed with messages on the floor or weird blood puddles that you might um, trigger without even wanting them to be triggered. Yes, it makes um, the game a bit more fluid, more polished. And of course it avo avoids um, hostile NPCs uh, and hostile player characters, I'm sorry, hostile player characters invading your world and challenging you. Yeah, so these are reasons why I recommend to total noobs, such as myself, to play offline. So, let's start a new game. Yes, indeed. <laughs> we skipped the intro because no one has time for this. Um, <clears throat> so, now we're here at the character creation. Let me show you um, quickly some aspects of it first. Um, the presets that we can choose from. Worry not, these presets are um, just... Um, some presets, there are um, sub-presets somewhere hidden. Uh, wait... Was it here? No. Yes, here. Here are even more presets. So, um, even if you're not um, that happy with these um, quite ugly presets in the beginning, you can Choose um, a preset that fits your needs better here, and then start modeling this sub preset. But um, I saved us all some time, created <laughs> a very edgy um, <laughs> um, a very edgy. Um, Character. Oh. That's not what I was looking for. This. So yeah. Oh, um, a very nice detail that not many character creators include is this. In Dark Souls, at least in Dark Souls Three, you can. Um, yeah, um, change the build of your character, his physique or her physique. In theory, you can go even, even deeper into it. Um, but, um, yeah, here. But, um, yeah, we don't have time for this. Long story short, in my opinion, this character creator is, generally speaking, one of the best and most detailed that is out there. At least it's the best of the Dark Souls series so far, but the character creator of Neo 2 and the character creators in Saints Row 3 and Saints Row the Dwarf are better, even better, because um, they highlight the areas that you're gonna change while um, this character creator is a bit, um, oops, uh, is a bit, um, yeah, how do I put it? Um, 
counterintuitive. It has many, many, many submenus. And once you open them, you have lots and lots of sliders. This slider set here was quite a more forward, but let's um, take um, this one, for example. You don't really, at least I, was not very sure what bridge position 1 would change. And I wasn't even sure what concave and convex would shave. Don't get me wrong, I know what a concave and convex form is. What this shape in general is from a um, geometrical point of view, but in a face creator with um, yeah, <laughs> these kind of wake names with numbers, it was kind of um, a try and error I had to go through, a try and error process I had to go through. Yeah. Just something I wanted to say. This is why, for Dark Souls game, I would say it's the best creator. In general, it's one of the best creators, because you have lots of creative freedom, but it's not the best out there. Especially Neo 2, a quite impressive Souls-like game. Oh. Quite rough and so um a quite impressive souls like game is better. But of course it's newer than Dark Souls 3, so <laughs> it would be um Oh oh wait 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 wait. I have forgotten to speak about the most important aspect, the classes. A few words about classes. The default class is the knight. Might be a fan favorite, but I personally recommend for new players the herald. He is a melee fighter, but comes with a healing spell and a chime or small bell, if you wish so, a cleric bell. And this chime or bell is used to cast the healing spells or miracles, as they are called here. In theory, another build that is, or class, I'm sorry, I call them always build, but they are classes. Another beginner class is the cleric. He has less defense, obviously, than <laughs> the herald, but you will see that defense is not what matters in Dark Souls. Because most bosses will kill you in two hits anyways, no matter the armor you wear. At least when you're a low-level character, such as these beginner classes. Later, when you're level 100 or even 800, yes, the game goes up to level 800 and even further, then armor might be the cherry on the ice that makes the difference between dying in three hits or four hits, yes. But right at the beginning, armor doesn't make the difference. Because your health is too low in general to take more than two hits. Anyways, the cleric comes with a healing spell like the herald, a mace, and a better chime or bell, and another spell, and I forgot what this spell does. I'm sorry. This glass here, the sorcerer, is my personal beginner's favorite and my secret tip. Why? He comes with two offensive spells, the so-called Soul Arrows, the normal Soul Arrow, which is cast quite quickly and still does lots of damage. Most normal enemies can only take one of these. And the Heavier Soul Arrow. The Heavier Soul Arrow will take longer to be casted, but of course does more damage and thus is more useful against bosses. As long as you have the time during the boss fight to use this heavy soul arrow. If not, use the normal soul arrow. He comes yeah, with a very, very fast dagger. So um, yeah, of course the damage per hit is low, but he has a high damage per second count. And a staff. And most importantly, a ring that also 
improves spells, sorcery. The most important skill or stat for a sorcerer is intelligence, because this determines um, casting speed and damage of spells, obviously. For clerics or heralds, the important attribute is faith, because this stat boosts healing speed, healing magic speed, and yeah, everything concerning miracles. This is how healing or cler clerical magic is called. It's called Miracle in Dark Souls. In theory, the Pyromancer is not a bad choice either, but I noticed that the sorceries are stronger than the pyromancies, and of course the clerics in theory could heal in all eternity if their mana did not run out. So it's either the sorcerers or the clerics, or if you up to more defense, the herald. But sorcerer and cleric are quite strong from the beginning. And are quite good at dodging due to the light armor and quite effective weapons, either a mace, slow moving but high damage, or a dagger, quick moving but low damage. While the herald, yes, with his spear, is um, with his spear, is um, in theory has a light um, range advantage. But um, during gameplay it won't matter much. It's more a theoretical thing. And in theory his armor will protect you later on better. But you will be able to buy basic armor such as this quite quickly. After the start. So in my opinion it's not worth the downgrade of mediocre attack speed and mediocre damage. And quite heavy armor, which, as we are low level classes at the beginning, doesn't do the trick against enemy attacks compared to the benefits of the sorcerer or the cleric. And here we will go with the sorcerer in this playthrough. So I can show you a bit that even low damage weapons that move fast are quite advantageous in Dark Souls, and I can show you that the power of sorceries or spells. We will go with a sorcerer build, and worry not, you will get all the armor sets you want and all the weapons you want later in the game. You will get better armor, heavier armor, more knightly armor. You can be a, um, a sort of enchanted knight or battle mage, a true battle mage, you know what I mean? With heavy armor and two handed sword later on. But <laughs> to fight the first boss, I tried it out myself, I don't recommend a melee build. Even the Herald, although he is n n quite beginner friendly, has some problems against the first boss. Oh wait, I forgot um, to choose a burial gift. I recommend, at least for a beginner, the life ring because his effect is pretty straightforward. His effect um, is permanent. As long as you wear this ring, you have more HP, while all this stuff um, is only one use stuff. They are one use items, so. <laughs> yeah. They don't give you right quite the edge in combat compared to this ring. So, after almost 12 minutes of me talking, we finally get. Ah, to start. <laughs>
Oh, one thing I wanted to notice. I play obviously with keyboard and mouse. You can see my mouse. But despite me playing with keyboard and mouse, you see these buttons. These are Xbox controller buttons or gamepad buttons. And this is something you cannot change. The display in this game will always be the controller display. No matter whether you play with, well, let's say keyboard and mouse, as I do, or a PlayStation controller or whatever fancy controller you want to play with. That's something um, other Souls-like games don't do. They show the correct buttons slash keys depending on what controls you play with. Neo 2, for example, does so. Um, yeah, most Souls-like games actually display the correct um, buttons. But this one does not. And the same goes for Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 2. So basically it means you have to learn the function of the buttons by heart. For example, A means that I need to press um, the consent button. And the consent button or interaction button in my case is the E key. It has nothing to do with um, A on my keyboard. V, A, S, D are used for walking. <laughs> yeah. Ah. God damn it. yeah. I'm still not really used to these um, controls. Peekaboo. <clears throat> you see that? I was able to roll through a boat. That's something you have to keep in mind. When you roll, you are invincible for some seconds or actually at the moment as we are low level character just one second but in theory we are invincible as long as we do the roll the dodge roll This is not very intuitive. I mean, rolling towards an enemy to avoid an attack is very counterintuitive. But it's totally possible. You see this dude? He will be pretty tough. So we stay away as far as we can and run to get this whatever this is nice and let's run away oh by the way something the game doesn't tell you you can jump in these games it's not like jumping in Sekiro or um, what's it called Elden Ring but by holding space or whatever key you assigned to jump and then tapping it while you run mm, yeah you can jump again this control is a bit counterintuitive too to hold on something and then tap it again to do an action is a bit weird but it's this way since Dark Souls 2 maybe even Dark Souls 1 You see this tower? This tower is the so-called Firelink Shrine. This is our our target, our target location. What I'm doing right now is resting at a bonfire. Usually um, in this bonfire menu that pops up, you can travel to other bonfires you unlocked. 
and of course you can store your items such as armors you don't need and spells you don't use you know all the scrap that weighs you down but you don't want to drop <laughs> because you fought quite hard for it um, what does resting at bonfires do? it um, refills your health your magic everything and it refills your Estus. What is Estus or Estus Flask? Well, Estus Flask are, um, as you can see, um, potions. And they are potions that refill themselves. There is this from Flask for Health, these are the golden ones. You see, gold is coated with um, health, like the golden spells or miracles for. <laughs> well, clerics, why blue? The blue Estus replenishes, refills your. How's it called? Your mana bar. Um, your mana, as you will see now, is the blue bar, which is used for casting spells. And if I take the blue Estus, it refills itself. So blue is aggressive magic and. Damn it! Every time, <laughs> and um, yeah, gold is the usual color for health, magic, aka miracles. <clears throat> I'm sorry for the lecturing, but. Um, yeah, as I said, this is a beginner's guide. Is there something nice here? Oh, and I forgot. No, uh, I am. No worries. I thought I might have forgotten something, but. Hmm. Nah. Nah. For the time being, I talked enough. Ah, let's switch to the stuff again, and <laughs> this is the reason why I recommend the sorcerer for beginners. He has, he starts with these, um, with several um, spells. Hoopala. Ah. Um, yeah, he starts with some spells that are very useful, not just against these um, quite weak tutorial enemies, but also against the boss we're gonna face behind um, the portal, the door. <laughs> he spotted us, walks towards us. God damn it! <laughs> yeah, no, you saw me dying the first time. The first of many times. But actually, it doesn't matter because right now we can't level up, so we can't spend the souls we gathered anyway. But if we really wanted to, we could um, recover them like I did. Oh, another reason why I recommend the sorcerer is um, oh, God damn it, every time I press the wrong button. Um, his um, knife is or dagger is quite fast. <laughs> I love how you can roll against an enemy and avoid his attack due to these. Um, few moments of invincibility. Ah. Yeah, if I used a controller, gamepad, however you want to call it, jumping would be different. That's another thing I wanted to mention. The controls of keyboard and mouse, mouse work fine, but... Ah, missed him. 
but um, yeah, one notices that this game is just a port, not actually made to be played or developed to be played with keyboard and mouse. I still prefer keyboard and mouse to a controller because um, due to my mouse's quite high sensitivity. I'm able to um, turn the camera very fast, yet controlled. And believe me, a mix of um, speed and being in control is quite important. Before we start fighting the boss, let's have a quick view, um, look around, whether there is anything useful. But no, there are no items here, so the only thing we can do is um, <sighs> do the one thing I don't want to do, removing this sword. <laughs> to take the first instance and whoa, whoa. oh I was stupid yeah I should take the faster casting arrows ah this wasn't worth it Of course he does this. Of course he turns into a weird abomination. Because this is fucking Dark Souls. <laughs> okay. Let's keep the distance. <laughs> But you could see I could, um, I was able to um, hurt this Udex dude. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna change my equipment a bit. I'm gonna exchange this with this. And... Yep. You see this number? The equip load is what determines how much stamina is used while you move, while you dodge. And it determines also how how quick and far away you can dodge. So, um... Huh? Yeah. The lower this number is, the better it is. And having my um, having my stuff equipped in the in the left hand, and my um, dagger or sword later. I will use a sword, maybe a bastard sword. Ha! Oh, just a tight in short. Useful later to upgrade your weapons, but not important right now. Backstab! Fuck. <laughs> I must. Uh... Oh god, how many of these um, chimes will I get? Um, I must proficient my watching skills. Ah. Uh. Oh, no, 
I'll jump away and ta-da! And then of course let's keep away, skip away. <laughs> yeah, always be prepared for a second hit. Actually what I did just now was I'm quite stupid. Because um, retrieving 500 souls really is nothing. Always forget that dodging towards enemies is actually <laughs> quite possible in this game. Yeah, no, don't stay away. Heal or don't heal. Why did I do this? Why did I go back to the bonfire? Well, I was hit by the enemy, but I will need all my health to to beat the boss later. So I'm saving up my health, and it's better to um, reset my life and all my Estus. <laughs> and fight the same enemy again. This time I will ignore all the my, my shit left behind, my souls, because again it's not worth it. Jump and then you do this. And you run again away. Trigger him to not to jump. Fuck. Oh, I can win him. I can win against this fucker. I must. I just have to. Is this game hard? <laughs> mm, it depends. It depends totally on your point of view, I mean... All the time I'm almost killing him. Training souls are quite handy. They are one-use items that will give you, um, how's it called, and that will give you money. Uh, the spell is quite nice. I'm using the heavier version. But, um. mm. 
Oh, God damn it. This might end badly. Oh, finally! Oh! And I got the coiled sword. Yeah, let me, um... Can I please recover my sword? And I can lit a bonfire. And here I can... Can I? No. I still can't push the equipment I don't use, like the shield. Yeah, I can't um, put it where it belongs. Unfortunately. But um, these souls, these fading souls are quite nice to um, to um, to have because um, they like um, a sort of souls bank, you know. You don't um, lose them when you die and still they will give you souls. Ta-da! 50 souls that were stored kind of in there. <laughs> well, I, no. no, what I'm saying is misleading. They are not stored there, but they just give you souls if you use them. So, bunkering many of them. is um, quite a good tactic. Let's see where this is stronger than our current weapon. Mm, not really. Yeah, the guard position goes up. This is signed in blue. But... Um, yeah, the attacks go down. The actual damage we do, as well as the... Um, Stamina cost, which goes up. That's all in red. <laughs> this might be the most useful and um, useless hint. Oh! Ah, he had a faster costume version. By the way, you can aim. You don't need to use um, the um, focus. You can try to aim with the camera, but it takes um, some time. A homeward bone. Homeward bones are quite useful. Um, they um, bring you to the last bonfire you sat at. So if you're really stuck in a place you can't get out, what do I know? Surrounded by enemies. Um, oh wait, this is a typical place for an ambush. But as I can see, there is only one. You know, in Dark Souls, the difficulty is not um, the damage you take or the enemy sponging your damage. Yes, this adds to difficulty, but... Um, This is not difficult, but a test of the patience I'm, of your patience. I mean, you see, it took me three attempts to beat the, de the um, enemy, to beat the boss. Yes. Yes, it took me three attempts, but um, well, after three attempts, I knew the pattern. I knew what I had to do. And yeah, I won. I won because then I knew um, that I was able to use the heavier spell. I had the time between his attacks to cast it. In the beginning I wasn't sure and failed because I used um, the heavier soul arrow spell at the wrong time. Hmm. Ah. I knew there was an item somewhere here, hidden. And there is indeed one. Let's always check for ambushes first. Because that's um, typical for Dark Souls. Ambushes, yeah, I knew it. Of course there are some dudes coming down for you. Attacking you at 
from behind. Um, yeah, what was I saying? Yeah, we're talking about difficulty and... Yeah, is it difficult? I don't know. After three times, I was able to defeat a boss. Who was, um... Not just heavy hitting, but most of all, a damage sponge. Due to patience. And keeping calm. And not focusing on the stupid souls I lost. You know, many players... Especially players that are not that experienced. Lose their head over the souls they gain and lose. And that's um, the key mistake. Because souls are quickly regained. I'm not here for a fair fight, fuck you. Um, where was I? Um, yeah, I lose the shit over some souls. But I quickly regained, especially in the beginning. And if you're really worried about your souls, um, yeah, just spend them. Sounds about. Are they attacking me? Yeah, they are, of course. Ah, you got some asses too, fucker. It's weird that the uh, normal soul ever does more damage to these than the uh, heavy soul ever. Ever. Uh, <laughs> excuse my English and my pronunciation. Mm. Oh, every time I have to press E, I don't have to use the old combination. Oh yeah, leave me alone, fucker. Going back. Like always, patience. Patience is what pays off, and not forgetting that your environment can be quite de deadly. And do I have one line? No, that's it. And never play fair. <laughs> nice. Am I able to use the weapon? No. What do I need? I need the following attributes. I need strength and I think this was dexterity. Let's have a look. Strength and dexterity, yes. And of course intelligence and faith, but this is no magic weapon. So of course this isn't needed. Oops. <sighs> Still not used to the controls, sorry. Okay. Anyway, let's get inside. This is the Firelink Shrine, our hub area. And from here there are many ways to take. But um, this will only be confusing. Welcome to the bonfire, Unkindled One. I'm a firekeeper. Hey firekeeper, what's up? I tend to the flame. Mm, yeah, I see you're doing great. The lords have left their thrones, 
and must be delivered to them. Oh, yeah. To this end, That's I am liberal. at thy side. Ashen one, sovereign left. I will show she Ashen. Me anything. Ashen so I'm Ashen one. No, she doesn't. Very well. Then touch the darkness within. Take nourishment from these. Uh huh. So, um, what did I need? Um. Yeah, um, this important step, the equip load that um, on the long run determines how efficiently you can dodge and what equipment weighs you down and which doesn't. Obviously, the higher this number is, the better equipment you can wear without being punished. So yeah, um, what do I want? Um, Elucidated by fire, burrow deep within me, retreating to, to wear better armor. We might need more strength. Let them Let's take first this strength. This more strength and farewell, Ashen yeah, yeah, the shut up. Check whether we have better armor suited for us. Oh. It's lighter. Mm. But um, its defenses are lower. On the other hand, the armor we have is already low tier. Oh, I need 16 dexterity for this. This our weapon, by the way, is still weaker than our current one. So it's not um, worth the effort. Mm. Another thing I need um, to tell you, if you're a beginner. The only important value of shields is the physical guard absorption or physical defense this value. This is what determines whether your shield um, will protect you from from normal enemy hits, normal sword hits, normal mace hits, whatever, and arrows, or not. And if this is lower than a hundred, and in this case it is, it means that you will still suffer damage despite blocking. It was this way in every single Dark Souls game. But, um... No? Can I kindle this? Yeah. But, um... Yeah, this is what I ate from the boss we need. But I don't think it's a good feature. Because in real life, any shield as long as you block with it, protects you from damage, from physical damage. Um, I'm doing reenactment and HEMA, which is historically European martial arts, and yeah, I fought a lot with buckler and sword. Buckler is a small shield made of steel, and well, whatever hits my stupid buckler <laughs> doesn't hurt me. I have a wooden shield too, and guess what? In sparring, using a wooden shield, protected me from any bruises and any damage. <laughs> in real life. So this is actually a quite stupid feature in the entire Silt series. Any shield should protect you from damage as long as you block with it. Speaking of physical damage, of course. Because, um, even in a fantasy setting, normal physical attacks are nothing but normal physical attacks. Ah, oh, finally. We can get to the storage box. Hmm. I want to um, use the Uchigatana later, so I won't put it in the storage box. But I will put these in the storage box and the shields, because as I said, these shields are useless. I don't know 
what? I switch equipment again. I'll stick to my mage. Sorcerer ropes first. And we'll save up my time and money to get some real armor such as chainmail. Real armor can be bought um, from her. A pleasure to buy a weapon. I've and and she sells as is that weapons too. <laughs> no. You see, she sells several weapons and sorcerer stuff. So, in theory, um. Oh, yeah, and um. A talisman. It is a weak chain. Yeah, she sells some armor and equipment. And as you can see, um, in theory, I could equip my sorcerer with melee weapons to my liking, or even healing spells. Ashen one. Yeah, I could <laughs> here equip them a melee build with um, soul arrows. Oh, god damn it. And, well, mix and match whatever I want to from the very start. That's what I wanted to say. And armor, yes. Armor can be gathered. As you could see by um, killing enemies. Sometimes you must kill the same enemies over and over again until they drop what they want, uh, what you want them to drop. But sooner or later they drop armor, such as um, this master's armor. And what I'm doing right now is the so called um, soul farming, which means I choose low level enemies to target. And yeah, kill them one by one to get um, all the souls. And this process of soul farming and oops, ah, no, still missed him. Uh, I must get closer, and I nearly got it. Oh come on! Finally. Aiming manually, be it arrows or spells, ain't that easy. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering why my hat always disappears, because I wanted to do so. Um, wait, where is it? Where is it? Yeah, I put it on auto. I could put it on on or I could turn it off totally. Turning it off totally, of course, is a bit stupid. Because, um, well, keeping track on what hit you and how much l life you still have left, or especially for a sorcerer build, how much mana you have left is um, <laughs> essential. Mm, but um, I don't want to see it all the time. So I'm putting it on auto. It's quite a good idea. And what I do now and will do for the rest of the day, oops, every goddamn time, is um, run around and collect souls. So, to sum up all my findings, playing as a sorcerer gives you quite an advantage. You have a very, very fast and low stamina cost um, or stamina efficient knife. You start with two rings if you choose so wisely. One ring being the life ring I showed you and the other ring is this ring. It boosts sorcery even more. Which is very handy for a sorcerer. Surprise, surprise. You start with a staff. Your um, equipment 
might not be the most protective armor, but is quite light and protects you from not physical but non-physical attacks. Which, um, on the long run, is more important than physical attacks. Oh, yeah. I knew I forgot to loot something. Mm. So this is why I recommend the Sorcerer, because you can engage melee if you really have to, but um, use spells to attack from afar. And uh, as you could see, with um, a bit of patience and the ability to um, to um, learn the pattern of an enemy, even huge, very deadly bosses, are no real problem. I mean, in the last run, once I understood that I had the time to use my heavy arrows, my heavy soul arrow spell, to be more precise. Yeah, killing the boss was not a big deal. It wasn't a total cakewalk either, but it wasn't that difficult. And of course, the invincibility seconds that activate whenever you roll are hilarious. Because once you get used to the idea that you can dodge close to an enemy, or that you can be hit while dodging, and as long as you're rolling, even them physically hitting you doesn't kill you. Or hurt you. you saw that? In theory I would be dead, but because of me dodging, his blade hitting me. Oh yeah. Didn't kill me. Ah, oh, that was a bit too slow. You see, I just rolled. Was hit by the arrow, but it didn't hurt me. Yes, I'm repeating myself, so I think this is where I should um, go quickly to the um, critique part of this game and not to the beginner's guide part of this um, video. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a bit tired, and English is not my native language. So, excuse my mistakes and my accent. Mm. My critique to sum it up. The game is not hard, it's just challenging your patience. If you play a build that has melee attacks as well as range attacks, It's quite easy. Yes, you need um, an attempt or two or three to get used to the bosses. And you need to get in the mindset that there is a time for focusing on earning money or souls. And there is a time for not doing so, which is the boss fights. And once you are in this mindset and spend all your money on either... Um, Items. Oh, leveling oh, up. How? Ashen one. Um. B. Hmm. This was not a good deal. Um, oh god damn it, I lost it again. Ah, Sorry. Well. Um, once you get in the mindset of not wasting your souls by bunkering them and dying during a boss fight, but um, spending them for some items and level ups, and 
only afterwards. Um, Ashen one. Hmm. Afterwards, um, making a farming session, you will find this game, yeah, not relaxing, but not unplayable either. And yeah, that sums up my critique of Dark Souls. Now to my critique of the fans, because exactly because of my critique of Dark Souls, I wouldn't say that the cult around its difficulty is just a fight. You know, people pride themselves... Oh, I forgot to let the bonfire, this is why they didn't respawn. You know, people pride themselves on um, the difficulty and beating this game gives them a kind of orgasm and strokes their ego. And this is quite ridiculous. Because we have a bit of patience and staying calm, not losing your head. <laughs> you can totally beat any boss here. In theory, I didn't need to level up. In theory, I could just progress with this character, like he started, without new gear, without leveling up, even only equipped with the two spells I had, and continue through the game, and with enough patience I would be able to beat any boss. As long as I don't run out of mana, of course. But that's what the Estus Flasks are for. I could um, change all my Estus Flasks um, from health flasks into mana flasks. Um, I think it's... Farewell, I've made them. Can I? Where can I do it? Was it at the modifier? I... It was either at the bonfire or by talking with her later. But you can um, turn all your health flasks into mana flasks, and vice versa. Turn all your mana flasks, all the blue ones, into golden health flasks. Flasks. Flask. Oh fuck! How do you pronounce this? Flask? 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 <laughs> I'm not sure about this, honestly. Well, long story short. As long as I don't run out of mana, this character can beat every fucking boss in the game. So what does this mean? It's not that hard. Because a totally starting class character is able to beat everything with enough patience. So, yeah. It's, it's so weird, honestly, that people pride themselves on such silly things like beating video games. I mean, woohoo! I killed a Dark Souls boss. Now I'm a better human and everybody else is just a stupid noob. Good, good, loser. That's how the fandom is. And if a fan get bot gets buttered, no one says, Ah, oh, no! The fandom is not just full of... Get good mentality and elitism. I must say, yeah, no. Sorry, but my experience is different, differently. And yeah, by commenting under my video, you're not proving me wrong on the contrary. You're just proving that most Dark Souls fans are just buttered elitists. As always, my real problem is not with the franchise. I kind of like these games. But it's with the fans. It's the same with Star Wars, honestly. As a kid and teenager, I was a huge Star Wars fan. And I would still consider myself a Star Wars fan. But... I don't like Star Wars fans. You know, out of my many, many friends... Um, only a handful is an acceptable Star Wars fan that doesn't always complain. And the same is a bit with Dark Souls. Those who don't brag complain and... I don't know, it's not fun. The fandom isn't fun. And 
this kind of makes playing multiplayer not fun and makes engaging in the community of Dark Souls not fun either. So Juliet. I think I could show you some tips and tricks. I hope my strategy of soul farming sessions, spending all your souls and then going off to explore or fight a boss will save you some headache. And yeah, don't become fans and don't pride yourself upon beating sort of challenging video games because that's a better move and we don't want to be better don't we we want to be alpha and being alpha means well <laughs> not talking about getting good when people ask for help but give them real advice like i did stay polite and well, pride yourself upon real life achievements, upon finishing school, finishing college, finishing university, you know, those are achievements that you can pride yourself upon, or, I don't know, um, sporty achievements. If you're good at your sport and you win a match against another team, nice, you can pride yourself, you can be proud of it. But being proud because of beating a video game or even just a boss in a video game is silly because as I tried to show you with enough patience you can overcome every challenge in a video game because they're not real life. They will never, never be as challenging as real life. So uh, yeah this will get good mentality is rude and irrational so i'm not telling you to get good but i'm wishing you a happy new year instead i hope you had um, nice holidays and i hope to see you all playing elden ring because i honestly can't wait for elden ring it takes Dark Souls 3 graphics and art style in an open world environment, which is nice. Because something that actually bothers me about the Souls games is that, uh, despite a nice combat system, many many attacks will end like this, hitting walls. Not just yours, but enemy attacks as well. And yeah, this actually erupts the yeah. awesome combat animations. From us players and our beautiful eyes. <laughs> no, I'm exaggerating of course, but it's a bit of pity that many things will end up like this, hitting walls. Instead of, well, um, taking place in a more open area such as this beginner area. And Elden Ring, on the other hand, will be like this beginner area all the time. Quite open, with several pa uh, paths to jump at, with some verticality. I mean, here we have verticality through stairs, and Elden Ring, you can jump. And by jumping, I mean not this, but an actual jump that brings you up. And the most important thing, you have a mount and mounted combat. And there's actually nothing cooler than mounted combat in a video game. Because, I can tell you from my experience, jousting is not totally dead in modern times. We have some joust tournaments, but jousting in real life is still fucking dangerous. You know, in reenactment and HEMA you're quite self safe, because um, modern fencing equipment used in HEMA and high quality modern era steel used in reenactment is quite safe and quite protective. But for jousting, even the modern era steel used for the historically accurate armors 
won't protect you from falling from your horse, and this can still hurt your back pretty badly. And yeah, hurting your back is not to be taken lightly. <laughs> so jousting is one of the few things I don't recommend doing in real life, but trying out in a video game, and guess what? Like in Mountain Blade, in Elden Ring there is mounted combat and pseudo-jousting. So I'm quite hyped for this. Can't wait to joust and fight from horseback. And yeah, with this optimistic view on Elden Ring, I wish you a happy new year. Goodbye friends. Goodbye mount riders and blade swingers. See you in 2022.